Good morning, warriors. Great morning, warriors. Warriors, why y'all didn't say good morning over there? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up? 5.55 a.m., 56 degrees here in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. Check this out. 56 degrees right now. 10-day forecast. <laughs> oh, it's going to be cloudy today. Tomorrow's going to be thunderstorm. 72 is going to be the high. I'm glad they turned that phone down over there. Okay, so I have the seven-day forecast now. Check me out. Been on my watch the whole time. Thank you, Karen, for teaching me that. <laughs> so, good morning, everybody. Uh, make sure you share the video. It's today's your birthday. Happy birthday. Um, we're going to be in 2 Samuel today, as you already know, 19. 2 Samuel 19 is where we're going today. I have something very important to share with you amazing people. How's everybody this morning? What's the temperature? What's the temperature? Oh, I see a blue diamond. Where'd you find that at, Debrina? I didn't notice a blue diamond. Y'all supposed to know where Why are y'all whispering about the chapter when we've been studying all morning over there? 39 through what? <laughs> Second Samuel 19. We're only going to read 39 and 40. It's a very lengthy chapter. Bear with me while I try to break it down. But, um, uh-oh, I hit my table. Good morning, good morning. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Karen. I'll make sure I say both of y'all. Um, how's everybody? Make sure you share the video. It's 557. Got some things to share with y'all today. How was your fast yesterday? I know it was amazing for those of you who um, were able to do it. Good morning, Tika. Tika! Tika, I'm gonna call you, girl. I need you to do something for me. Yes. Hi, Josette. Love you, girl. Been thinking about you and Ken. So, um, yeah, let's go into praise. Lord, we thank you. Good morning, Bertha. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Jai. Thank you for thank you, Jai, for typing that in. You're amazing. Okay, I love you guys. Go ahead and hit the share button. Let's go in and give God glory. Today is Thursday. These, the days are going really fast, like really, really fast, like super fast. Good, the Lord. So I'm glad you're doing good. Good morning, Priscilla. So, Father, we just thank you for another amazing day, another day that I can spend in your presence and with my family, the prayer warrior nation. God, I honor you for their lives. I ask you to bless them and keep them in your perfect will. God, we just exalt your name this morning because there is none that compares to you. There are no rivals. There are no equals, God. There are no nothing that even comes close to you, God. So we just thank you this morning for being our Elohim, God. You are the creator of the universe. You're the strong one. You are the supreme one, God. We just thank you, Father, that we are safe in your arms, God. And you, we find our refuge. You are our source. You are our shield. You are our buckler. You are our stay. You are our present help in the time of trouble, God. We thank you that you are our miracle-working God. You are the God of miracles. And at any time you so choose, you can step down into time and space and interrupt the natural flow of things. And God, we just thank you for that. Thank you, dear God. We honor you that even the hearts of kings is nothing more than a river of water in your hands. And you can twist and turn their hearts to favor us, God. And we thank you for that favor this morning. We honor you for it, oh God. Lord, we acknowledge you as El Shaddai. You're the you're the God of more than enough. You have more than enough, bountiful, plenty, lacking nothing. We thank you this morning, God, for that, for being our Jehovah Jireh. You provide for us, God. We thank you that you are the I am. We honor you for being the great I am this morning, Father. We thank you for that, oh God. Lord, there's none like you, Father. Just for giving us another day with air in our lungs, we praise you, we bless you, we magnify you, God. Just to have the cognition to be able to get into your word, to comprehend your word. We thank you. We thank you for the insight and the teaching of the precious Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for Jesus and because of his bloodshed we have this access to you god we can come into your throne room anytime we so please 24 7 because the veil has been ripped so god this morning we just cry out holy 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 we join in with the angels this morning we rejoice in your goodness we bask in your presence god we just thank you for this day and for just for another time to come together and learn more about you and to see how you reveal yourself and your plan for our lives through scripture we bless you for this morning and we thank you holy spirit have your way as we go into this teaching this morning we're your students we're your children god we're listening speak lord with your service we want to hear a fresh word from the throne room this morning how we bless you in jesus name we prayed amen great morning great morning y'all doing good today hey 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 we get a lot done before in those first five minutes now don't we <laughs> good morning good morning hi jennifer so praise god just tell the lord thank you just type in some praise good morning uh jazz love you so um yeah it's his clock on the dot um Y'all know what to do. Put our hearts and our butterflies. I like, I see y'all find these blue diamonds. That's cute. Um, so yeah, I, I need to share something with y'all this morning. Make sure you hit the bottom left hand corner. We're going to share this video. If today's your birthday, happy birthday. Um, 
before I want to give a couple more minutes, but make sure you share the video. We're going to go to Second Samuel 19. I'm only going to read 39 and 40. And I was just reading this all morning, just reflecting, and God just, just showing me um, how in God, you don't have to push your way. There's always, he's always going to pull you into the place that he has you, the place he has for you. And so we're going to see that that's what I got out of this um, lesson today. It's, it's a lot going on in um, Second Samuel 19, but in this, we're going to see how David does not push his way back into Jerusalem. He allows God to pull him back because it was the place that God had for him. And so even after his son dies, Absalom dies, like in the last chapter, we're going to see that he doesn't force his way and say, you know what, I'm the king. He waits like a gentleman. He waits to be pulled back into the kingdom. And so that's noble. That's something we can learn from. And so we're going to jump into that in just a moment. But I want to share something with you first. And y'all get ready to type in her name the correct way we're going to spell it. So, um... This is important. I want y'all to listen and share this. Uh, in 2013, um, a lot of you may be familiar with this story because it made national headlines. Um, a, little, a young lady, a, t a teenager, I believe she was 13 at the time, Jahai McMath. Um, Jahai went in. She was in California, and she went in for a simple you know, procedure to have a tonsillectomy, to have her tonsils removed. A lot of you probably remember her, uh, Jahai McMath. Make sure y'all spell her name right, J-A-H-I McMath. But anyway, into the, at the end of 2013, she went in to have her tonsils removed. She had sleep apnea, and her doctors were thinking that, you know, if they removed her tonsils, that would help with the sleep apnea and all that. So she went in and had her tonsils removed. And in the process, she bled out in the recovery room, and so much so that she went into, like, a coma and had a heart attack, and they declared her brain dead. And I know some of y'all probably remember this story. But anyway, uh, the the... The doctors and everybody wanted to pull the plug on Jahai and basically said that she was dead. They even declared her dead and issued her a death certificate. And her family fought uh, the doctors and fought the hospital. You know, they had to get legal representation. They just would not accept that she was actually dead. They, they didn't want to pull the plug. And so long story short, the hospital released Jahai to her family, but of course they didn't think that she would survive. And there's a lot of video footage out there. I mean, this story was covered in the media. It's a lot of information. You guys can go out there and read it today about this story. But one thing that stood out to me was the fact that one of the physicians spoke on national television. And he basically said that it's just a shame, and I'm paraphrasing, but yes, Jahai, it's just a shame that uh, the family cannot accept that she's dead. And um, and then there's been other people who were on TV and different things that have said they're not a prayer in the world could bring her back and so this all happened in 2013 it is now 2017 and i was actually contacted by the family and um i was sent a card with the information and i was sent the newspaper clipping um, about her story and i remember this story even though this happened right around the time that my mother died i still remember this story this was like december 13. but i want to say this again jahai has a death certificate they actually issued her a death certificate she has an actual death certificate um from back in december of 13 so according to the state of california she's been dead since 2013 anyway i was contacted by the family and they asked me to pray for jahai and they want us to travel to new jersey and pray for jahai and believe god for a miracle and that's right up my alley i mean like that's me all day because i just love when god defies logic and reasoning and I won't take take too much longer with this because I'm going to keep you guys uh, posted as we travel. We're going to travel at the end of the month to New Jersey. And we're going to pray for Jahai. And I really covered your prayers because so this is a big deal. Because, you know, when I when I saw that footage and, and they said things like they need to just accept that she's dead. That just struck a nerve with me, like a holy nerve. Because I was like, this family has chosen to defy odds and defy what science says and believe the report of the Lord. And... We're just going to link our faith together. And I believe that if God is sending us to New Jersey, it's for a reason. So basically at this point, the family has to prove that Jahai is alive. And I'll just leave it at that. I can't get into all the legalities and details. But just know that at the end of the month, we are going to New Jersey. We're going to pray for Jahai. And my thing is, like you said, God raises the dead. So it doesn't matter. I don't care what the death certificate says. We believe that God is going to reverse that death certificate. And that's what we're going to stand on. And so I just want you guys to be in prayer about this. Be in prayer for the family. Be in prayer for this precious child. And I just believe that the world's going to know her name. Her name means infamous or widely known. And it's like, she, and right now she's known for what's happening now. But I believe she's going to be known for the woman that was raised from the dead. That's what I believe she'll be known for. A mouthpiece for God, like I keep saying, for Jordan. And that, yeah, the world said I wouldn't make it. The world said I was dead. The world laughed at me and said God couldn't raise me up. But the devil is a liar. 
that because God created us. He can lift us. He can breathe new air into our lungs whenever he gets ready. And so I covered your prayers. Jai's favorite color is purple. So I'm going to share my purple hearts with Jahai. So anytime I see a purple heart, I will know it's not just for me. I'm going to share my purple hearts with Jahai. So I just wanted to share it with you guys this morning. And I was telling Brittany and everybody yesterday, I was sitting here with my robe. I wish I could come on here where I really look in the morning. I had on this furry uh, black and house coat. I'm country. House coat with flowers on it. And when I was watching that video and that guy was saying, you know, I was seeing things like, they were saying things like there's not a prayer in the world that could bring Jahai back. I said, I want to go to New Jersey in this house coat. Like, I wanted to go right then because I was, I felt like, I said, I told Brittany, I said, I see why David tackled Goliath. Because Goliath was making this joke out of God and David came through little old David. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine thinking he can defy the God of the angel armies? And I told Brittany, yes, I said, who is that uncircumcised Philistine that thinks they can defy our true and living God and say that not a prayer in the world can bring her back? The devil is a liar. There is power in prayer. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be seeing our lives transformed right before our faces. So it's like the devil's a liar. I need you guys to link up with me. Um. I believe God for a miracle. And I don't care what the world says. And there's not a prayer in the world that will bring her back. I told her grandmother, we'll see about that. So, yes, that's where we are with that. Prayers for Jahai McMath. Like I say, re research it. There's a lot of information about her out there. So, thank you guys for your support. I already see the support coming in. He is able. So, I'll keep you posted on the journey. We'll be praying about that every day moving forth. So thank you for letting me share that with you. So let's go ahead and jump in. I want to spend more time. We're going to go ahead and jump into 2 Samuel 19. I'm going to read two lines and just make the point that God will pull you into the place where you're supposed to be. There's no pushing. You don't have to force you away. So remember yesterday, um, and I already prayed over the word for today, and make sure you share this, please. And if you missed it, happy birthday. Bless you, bless you. Um, so yesterday, you know, remember David was having his pity party about his son. Of course, I mean, you know, it was his son, and we talked about this week, unconditional love, and we talked about the fact that our pain, the pain in our lives will not alter the purpose that God has for us. Like, yes, I may be in pain. Yes, I'm hurting, but it will not alter the plan that God has for me. If anything, that pain in my life, I'm going to use it as fuel, as a catalyst to just lead me into the life that God has for me. I will not give up, you know, and that's what we talked about him yesterday. So, you know, David was whining and crying and complaining. I'm going to put this on silent because people love messaging me on my inbox like I'm not on live and it's a distraction. So I had to turn on silent because I could hear it beeping yesterday while I was on the video. Anyway, back to what I was saying. And so we were just talking about how, you know, Joab came and put uh, David in check and said, look, you crying about Absalom and if you don't get out here to this gate and tell the rest of us thank you, there ain't gonna be nobody left here. Because remember, yes, you lost Absalom, but we spared all, all your wives, your concubines, your sons, your daughters. Like, don't act like what we did was not a good deed. So, you know, David comes out, of course he's mourning, because regardless of what his son Absalom had done, he loved him unconditionally. And when you lost my unconditional, no matter what kind of hellion they are, you still love them because that's your child or whoever it is, you just have an unconditional love for them. And so anyway, after he dies, you would think that he would go ahead and just make his way back to Jerusalem. Because remember, Absalom ran him out of Jerusalem. What he ran himself out of Jerusalem was because Absalom had, like, you know, pulled a stun and made everybody believe that he was the, had been anointed king and all that. So what I like so much about this passage is the fact that I don't read anywhere in here where David forced his way back to Jerusalem. Let's go ahead and do 39 and 40 really quickly. And I'm just going to summarize the whole chapter. We're going to go into prayer. Um, so in 39, I'm reading in the New Living Translation, 2 Samuel 19. It says, so all the people crossed the Jordan with the king. After David had blessed Barzillai and kissed him, Barzillai returned to his home. The king then crossed over to Gilgal, taking Kimham with him. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel escorted the king on his way. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel escorted the king on his way. So when David goes out and sits in front of his gate, everybody gets word and they start coming to him. The people start coming to him and all this. And so the the it, the other tribe, not Judah, they were all discussing like, you know, what are we going to do now? You know, we had anointed Aslam as king and now he's dead. I mean, should we just bring David back? They're having like this big discussion in Israel, like what are we going to do? We don't have a king. Just all this nonsense and craziness and cast is going on at the same time yesterday. They was like, but why hasn't Judah welcomed me back? They're my own tribe. Like, what's up? Why are they so silent? So, you know, David sends out his, his two priests to go out and kind of talk to Judah. And, of course, they unanimously decide they want him to come back. So, Judah comes to greet him, to welcome him back to Jerusalem. But notice, David didn't force his way. 
He waited for them to say, we want you back. We want you to be our king. While the Israelites over there kind of debating and bound, they're like, well, you know what? He did, you know, slay Goliath. He did beat the Philistines. I mean, he was a good king. I mean, maybe we should just ask for him back. Maybe they felt bad because they had turned on him and had supported Absalom. So they were just, just really trying to sort things out and trying to figure things out. So anyway, Judah comes and meets David. David begins to cross back over to Jordan. And y'all, I got to say this. When he crossed back over to Jordan, guess who's sitting there? Oh, Shimei. Y'all remember Shimei? Shimei was the one that was throwing the rocks and the stones and the dirt at David and just saying, you a killer. You killed Saul. Like they, That's the one that like followed him on the hillside. David is running out of Jerusalem, and Shimei is on the side over there throwing stuff, cutting up, throwing stuff at his army and just making a mock at him, saying, you a killer, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he's the first one, one of the first ones that greeted David as he came back over to Jordan, bowing down his feet and saying, Lord, you know what I did to you? Put it all out of your mind. Just don't even think about how I cursed you out and called you a murderer and threw rocks and stones at you. Oh, Lord, just, why don't you just put it all out of your mind? That, that, that tripped us out this morning. And so, uh, um, Abishai was like, no, kill him. Cause you know, he cursed the king and David was like, look, look, you son of Zariah ain't going to be no killing today. I'm the king of Israel again. There's not going to be any executions today. And so that's what happens with, with Shimei. So as David's continuing to progress, he runs into Mephibosheth. Y'all remember Mephibosheth, lame in both feet. And David is seeing, he's like, okay, why didn't you come with me? Because remember a few chapters back, Ziba was waiting, strategically waiting for David with all this stuff and wine and stuff that David needed and basically lied on Mephibosheth. I'm like, Mephibosheth didn't come, um, you know, blah, 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 blah. So David just believes Ziba and gives Ziba all of Mephibosheth's stuff. So now he runs into Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth hadn't shaved. Yeah, make sure y'all read all this. He hasn't done anything. So that was a sign that he had been in mourning like since David left. So David's like, uh, what is up with you? Why didn't you come? He's like, well, King, you know, I'm lame in both feet. Like, how was I going to get there? Oh, Ziba didn't even put him on his donkey and bring him like Ziba did him dirty. So he was like, I couldn't get there. So anyway, long story short, David blesses Mephibosheth and he restores him. And he basically, uh, you know, he had given Ziba all his stuff. He basically took it back and went back to the original agreement with Ziba. And then the last thing I want to point out is, the, is our other guy. What's his name? Brazili. Because you might not know who he was in 39 that I just read. He was the one that was gracious to David when David came to Mahanam. He's the one that fed him and uh, Brasilia was rich. So he took care of him. So when David is finally being restored back to Jerusalem, he comes to Brasilia. He's 80 years old. And he's like, I want to do something good for you. You know, why don't you come back with me? And Brasilia was like, you know what? I appreciate that. That's really nice. I'm old. I can't taste food anymore. I can't taste wine anymore. I can't have, hear what you're saying, David. Let me just walk you, help you cross the Jordan and then go back to my home and die. But you can take my son, Kim Ham. So that's why I'm 39. It says all of the people crossed the Jordan with the king after David had blessed Brasilia and kissed him. Brasilia returned to his home. And then the king crossed over Gilgal, taking Kim Ham with him. So basically we have... David heading back to Jerusalem. He is being restored. Uh, he forgives Shimei for cutting up and acting a fool with him. Um, he realizes that Mephibosheth had been duped and that he was never able to sell the donkey because nobody put him on the donkey to let him follow him. You know, and then he takes Kim Ham with him. Kind of reminds me of like what he did for Mephibosheth and Jonathan. He was... David was just a good dude, like for real. Like I know he had a few hiccups and he didn't raise his children. But other than that, it was like he sounded like he was a really good guy. He was very noble. And my whole point is that I didn't read anywhere where he forced himself back into Jerusalem. And I was like, God, what are you telling us this morning? What does this mean? He had been appointed king. Y'all know we've been man, we've been in this story for a minute. But it's like he never forced his way. And that is a characteristic that we want to have. It's like, you know how God can make you a promise. Like, whatever it is, I know he's made you some promises. But it seems like the promise is not coming to pass. And sometimes, a lot of the times, we get impatient. And we start trying to make things happen. But David is showing us that he, David knew he was the king. Look at all he went through to even get to the throne in the first place. Then only to be thrown off the throne uh, by his own son, Absalom. And now, after Absalom is killed, you would think he would just go straight back to the kingdom but instead he waited like a perfect gentleman he waited to be invited back to the kingdom and that is noble because he knew that God had anointed him and appointed him to be king and if that was true he wouldn't have to force his way because things would just align and it will position him back to where he needed to be so that's my message to you this morning is that don't push God pull me type that in this morning Lord pull me
Because it's so much better to be pulled into something by the hands of God than to force your way to something prematurely or in your own strength that will later backfire on you. It's like David could have gone back as King David, you know, the one that defeated Goliath, the one that defeated the Philistines, the one that defeated Saul, the one that defeated the Jebusites, and all the, the people around the Euphrates, and all these people that he defeated. But instead, he waited on God to open that door for him to go back to the place where he knew he was supposed to be. And so this morning, it's like, God, just pull us. You know, I know what you've shown me. I know where I'm supposed to be. I have a sense of where you've called me to go and what I'm supposed to do. But at the same time, Lord, don't let me rush it. Don't let me push it. Don't let me step on anybody's toes. David could have gone back as the mighty king that he was and a conqueror, but instead he came back as a prince. Uh, instead of going back as a terror, he came back as a gentleman and he allowed them to welcome him back in. And it is just so strategic that he was so patient that he knew. Because one thing about it, when you're sure of yourself and when you're sure of what God's called you to do, you can wait it out. Like, God, it may not have happened yet, but I know you're going to do it and I know you're able. So, God, just pull me. That way I don't have to make missteps. That way I don't have to go in the wrong way. If I just allow you to pull me and show me and light up the path I'm supposed to take, that won't be a struggle. You're going to do it for me. You're going to clear that path and I'm going to know. And that's what David did in this. And so I want the folks in this morning, God, pull me. Pull me, Father. That way I don't have to be confused. Pull me. Pull me, God, into the direction that you would have me to go. God, this morning, make sure you share this video. Father, pull us. Pull the prayer warriors, God. Pull my family, my brothers and my sisters. Pull us, God, into that place that you have for us, God. Because we already know you have a plan for our lives. We already know that that plan is beautiful. We already know that you had that plan even before we were formed in our mother's womb. So, God, we thank you because you already had that plan. It will come to pass in our lives. But, God, help us to just learn the character traits that we need to learn and develop. So that when you pull us into this place, this promised place, this land of Canaan that you have for us, God, that that we will know how to handle it, that we will be mature enough and wise enough, God, to handle the weight of what you have called us to do. God, we thank you so much for David. We really do, God, this study. It has transformed my life to really look into the life of a warrior, to look into the life of a man who was actually after your heart, a man who was said to have an excellent spirit. And God, it's, it's so warming for us today to know that a man who missed it, a man who committed murder, a man who was an adulterer, a man who missed it, you still loved him. You still allowed Jesus to come through his family line. You still called him a man after your own heart. You still called him a man of excellent skill and excellent spirit. And you still allow us to read and study about him. And that shows us something this morning. That we don't have to be perfect. That we make mistakes. That you love us flaws and all. And God, for that this morning, we thank you. For that alone this morning, we thank you, God, because this word, it gives us hope. It empowers us. It equips us to go out and do the things that you have called us to do. So God, this morning, we thank you for the pool. We thank you for the pool. We thank you for the elevation. We thank you for the promotion, God, that will take place in due season. God, we thank you for this morning, God, that even the hearts of kings, nothing but a river in your hands. And God, this morning, we thank you that you are moving it and shifting it in our favor. God, we thank you this morning for the doors that you are opening in our lives that no man can shut. God, we thank you this morning for lifting us to our blessed places. We thank you for this morning. God, I ask you now to go before the prayer warriors and make every rugged path smooth. Clear it for them, oh God. Bring every high place low. God, do it for them this morning, oh God. Light up the path they are to take. Bless them. Keep them in perfect peace. Give them wisdom even the more. Give them discernment even the more. Open doors them that no man can shut. I thank you for this morning, God, for favoring them, God, for placing your righteous right hand upon them, God, for broadening their horizons, God, for blessing them, for increasing them, God, in knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and all provision. God, I thank you for the increase, God, that latter you should be greater than before. I thank you for it, oh God, you're giving them back double for their trouble, beauty for their ashes, God. You're paying them back restitution for everything that was lost. I thank God you're giving them double Double, double, God, double portion, double anointing, God, double for everything they've lost, God. You're redeeming the times that were not behind schedule. You're redeeming the times for us, God, this morning, and we just thank you for it, oh God. Lord, we thank you this morning for your goodness, for your love, for your grace, for your favor, God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for the gifts, the skills, the talents, God, you have placed on the inside of us, God, that may it all be used for your glory. God, this morning, we give it all back to you. Do with our lives what you will, God. It is you who writes our histories and love. It is you, God, God, that turns our lives into beautiful love songs, into beautiful melodies. God, it is you who sings and dances over us. God, it is you who smiles down on us. God, it is you who promises not to.
to withhold any good thing from us because we love you, God. We thank you for your word. As we come to you, we believe you are who you say you are, God. You reward us because day after day, morning after morning, we diligently seek you, God. We take it your word. We trust you. We pray bold prayers. We dream big. We dare to believe you for the impossible, God. The things that the world laughs at. The things the world says impossible, God. With you, we understand that we operate in a different realm. They can scratch their heads because they don't understand. But God, you're the God who defies logic. Thank you, Father God. It is you. You defy reason. It doesn't have to make sense. You defy science. We thank you for this morning. God, before we close the prayer, we armor up as we always do with the bell of truth around our waist. The helmet of salvation, God. The, the sword of the spirit, which is your word. Let it be hidden in our hearts, God. We carry that shield of faith. We believe you for the impossible, God. We wear those standards of peace. We thank God that we go. There is peace in our homes, in our families, in our relationships, in our world. We thank you for peace this morning, oh God. And that breastplate of righteousness, oh God. We will do what is right, what is pure, what is pleasing and holy in your sight. Lord, we thank you for Avery this morning, for total restoration, for joy and strength. He should be a mouthpiece God oh, a mouthpiece for you God he will declare your goodness he will testify of your goodness we thank you for this morning God we thank you for it this morning God for baby Gabriel you're the Lord of a cancer God we thank you for his life this morning oh God that he is redeemed and restored and made whole we thank you and oh God for Jahai I thank you Father God that she shall rise and live again I thank you Father God that with her own mouth she will testify of your goodness and I thank you God that because of this miracle that shall soon take place science they will scratch their heads they will have to re-look at this whole thing of what's considered brain dead and what's considered physically dead. I thank you, God. Their death certificate, it is reversed in the name of Jesus. I thank you this morning, God. Great is your faithfulness, Father. We honor you. We worship you. We adore you, Father God. And we thank you that you are still the God of miracles. Nothing is too hard for you. We honor you this morning, oh God. We thank you, Father God. Any prayer request that has come in. If you're in a similar situation this morning, somebody in your family is in a similar situation as Jahai or anybody we've named or Mariah or Tonto, anybody we've named, God, people. If there's anybody in your family like that, you can type them in. God, as these requests have come in today, Lord, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. See the needs of your people this morning. And we trust that even now you are healing, you are delivering, you are releasing breakthroughs, you are releasing suddenlies, miracles, signs, and wonders. Lord, I thank you for this morning. Every request has been entered by faith. God is met. I thank you. All provision, financial breakthroughs. I thank you. People struggling with bad habits. God, I thank you that you're breaking those habits this morning. Thank you for the miracles that shall soon take place. How we honor you for this day. God, we bless you. In Jesus' name. Remember, God, to, uh, y'all, today I have the prayer link at 1230 Central Standard Time. Make sure you guys tune in for that with Charlene Aaron from CBN News. And um, I also have an interview this morning. I put a post on my page last night. It's a radio interview. You can go to allnations.net. I believe that's the website. They're going to interview me just about what God is doing in my life and just the miracles and the, the power of prayer and all that. So if you're able to tune in, please tune in to that. Um, y'all, God is up to something. And I'm so happy that you guys are on this journey with me, that I'm not alone. Uh... And that really helps me a lot because I know that it's not just my prayers and my faith, but that I have the faith that the prayer wars linked up with mine. And I just believe with our own eyes, we are going to see not just one miracle, not just two miracles, but miracle after miracle because miracles, signs, and wonders follow the believers. I love you guys so much. I love you. And I will see you in the morning. You have a great day. Hallelujah. Love you, Don and Victoria. Thank you, Jesus. Michelle, we, we bless your womb this morning. Michelle Young, we bless your womb this morning. God, I ask you to open her womb. I ask you to open her womb and bless her with a seed that will come forth and remain. I thank you for her life. Everything in her life is aligned in every reproductive organ. It is aligned. I speak to her uterus. I speak to her fallopian tubes. I speak to her ovaries. I speak to everything in her, God. And I command it to align the way that you created the human body to align and function. I thank you for normal cycles. I thank you for normal ovulation. I thank you for a full-term pregnancy uncomplicated. I thank you for the baby boy or baby girl that should come forth or both to give you glory and honor all the days of your of their lives. God, I thank you for this morning for the reproductive miracle, not just for Michelle, but for every believer on this page that's believing you for a miracle in the reproductive area. God, I call it forth. In Jesus' name, I thank you, God. Amen. Love y'all.